Block uh, introduces her. This is Shaniru and Osana. Uh, she is a, um, well, let's say she's an uh, unofficial member of the Sandpoint Town Guard. Uh, at this remark, Shalilu actually smirks a bit to herself. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, Shalilu, these uh, these people are uh, um, they are the Spiral Vanguard. They have helped uh, Sandpoint immensely with the, with the recent troubles with the goblins. I asked them to be here because you indicated to me that what you had to say regarded the security of the the city. Is that correct? She, she looks at him and says, Yes, indeed. She again nods towards you. Guys, I pleasure meeting you, I'm sure. Well then, let me get straight to the point. Uh, Baylor here has told me of your work against the goblins. Well done. I, myself, have dedicated the last several years of my life keeping them from causing too much trouble around these parts. But they are tenacious, and uh, they are a vicious little bunch of runts. They are like weeds that bite, I would say. As you may know, or may not know, there are a couple of major goblin tribes in the region, and traditionally they are pretty good at keeping each other in line with intertribal squabbles and the like. Yet, from what I have been able to piece together, Members of all five tribes were involved in the raid here in Sandpoint at some degree. A fair number of the Mosswood goblins I dealt with yesterday were already pretty beaten up. And there were actually a lot of chatter about the Longshanks who killed so many of them. Now that I've met you, it seems obvious to me that, uh, <laughs> from the descriptions at least, that you are the persons they were talking about. Seems you make, made quite an impression, as she smiles. In any event, uh, the fact that the five tribes seems to be working together is what disturbs me. Uh, goblin tribes don't usually get along unless there is something very big planned, or, um, or something the like, and big plans usually require big bosses. I'm afraid that someone is moved in on the goblins and is organizing them. Judging from the recent raids you have told me about, Sheriff, what they're organizing seems to be bad news for, uh, for us all. The... Um, she looks around. I, uh, I know for a fact that... Um, a quite unsavior character. And she, and you get the feeling that she really sort of dislikes <laughs> this this creature in in question. He is a uh, ranger, or he pretends to be. Uh, he is a bugbear, uh, calling himself Brutalamus. She shrugs. He and I has been fighting quite the guerrilla war over the years, trying to vie for control over these woods. I had a run-in with him yesterday, and um, I was very sad to, or very disturbed to notice that he actually had some goblins in tow. I managed to kill uh, quite a few goblins and managed to wound him, but um, in the end I had to flee and retreat here. And this is what has prompted me to visit you all again and deliver this warning. Hmm. That might be the man that we found the footprints of uh, a couple of days ago. She looks surprised. Uh, footprints? Uh, yes. Uh, someone has um, gotten into the old tomb of uh, the previous priest and Zachian stolen Tobin. his corpse. Mm, yes. And um, stolen his corpse and headed out into the forest with it. There were a half dozen goblins along with the larger humanoid's footprints, ladder marks on either side of the wall, leading to the graveyard. I see. Can you describe these footprints for me, the humanoid ones? Hmm. Uh, you can make an uh, intelligence check. Right. I, say, I thought it was like a leather boot of some kind, but uh, I don't really remember that much either. 
Ten! Woo! <laughs> Plus four modifier, bitches! <laughs> Suck it down! Uh, Salor uh, remembers the, the print well enough. Yes, it was a boot print, and he can describe it in roughly, at least, to Shalelu. Uh, she seems to consider it and shakes his head. No, no, Brithalamus um, doesn't wear boots. So mm. it can't be him. I suppose I have this question to ask you, DM. Would a bugbear be like a nature thing or a dungeoneering thing? I suppose I was just checking to see what Solora might know of bugbears. Um, that could be a, a nature thing, indeed. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, throw that down then. What does Solora Soriasu know about bugbears? Do they work together with goblins, or at least manipulate them, or what? <laughs> All right, let me let me check my notes here. It's like I'm trying to fucking finish the session and go to sleep. You son of a bitch, you American! What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> hmm. The um, the bugbear is the largest of the goblinoid races, a lumbering brute that stands at least a head taller than most humans. They are loners, preferring to live and kill on their own rather than form tribes of their own kind. Yet it isn't uncommon for small bands of bugbears to work together, um, or dwelling in goblin or hobgoblin tribes where they function as elite guards or executioners. Uh, bugbears do not form large warrants like goblins or nations like hobgoblins. Uh, they prefer, prefer smaller scale mayhem uh, that lets them keep their favorite acts, murder and torture, on a more personal level. Humans are a bugbear's favorite prey, and most count the flesh of humanity as a dietary staple. Grizzly trophies of ears and fingers are common bugbear decorations. Um, bugbears, when they turn to religion, favor gods of murder and violence, with various demon lords being favorites. A typical bugbear stands seven feet in height and weights around 400 pounds. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, DM. Of course. Uh, the sheriff listen to this quite worried it says yes that is uh, uh, I think my uh, my allies here have concluded something similar about the goblins and it looks to you for uh, for opinions We have no opinions. <laughs> Apparently, no one has any opinions. I was waiting, you know. Someone might 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 lead us, you know. Aranos, the the ladies' man, might might carry us to saying something. He might be I, muted. I don't know what to say. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's just too mesmerized uh, by her beauty or something. <laughs> All the grizzly trophies. Roldor's like, look at those trophies. <laughs> Alvin's like, I don't want to be here by the sheriff. This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, uh, Arnos will just stand and ponder a bit. Uh, I guess. <laughs> so Laura will scratch his uh, scratch his head over his uh, his his hood with his gloves and say, "Yes, you were telling me about the varying tribes uh, near uh, Sandpoint in the hinterlands. It would certainly be much of a greater curiosity, but then that would mean that the." footprints that were with the goblins would belong to another, which still comes back to someone who has intimate knowledge of Sandpoint, to have been able to identify the tomb of Tobin and someone who perhaps wanted him for some purpose. I don't imagine they just stole his corpse on some whim, although goblins are insane. Uh, the tracks also, also led to a place um, where we found tracks of boats. Shalele looks concerned. Boats? Yes. We had gone to... We had followed the tracks that we had noted by the crypt, and it took us to a large campsite where, presumably, the goblins who had raided Sandpoint had made their homes before attacking. We found one scout there who is no longer among the living, and investigating the campsite, finding the normal goblin refuse, we discovered large tracks which could signify boats. 
few things to consider is that is disturbing. Goblins never build boats. They drown, usually. I have never experienced them, actually. Just seems to think, well, there are the moss wounds, I guess. And, um, but they usually swim. Uh, there was also the skeletons down in the tomb. I imagine uh, the skeletons were left behind, perhaps in association with the robe that Erevan had assumed to be arcane in nature, perhaps as a maybe a parting gift for whoever came into the crypt afterwards. It would lead me to think that whoever took it had a grudge against uh, Father Tobin, but that it might not be immediately relevant here. She, she nods, I see. And I heard from the sheriff that you had a more run-ins with goblins yesterday night. Uh, yes, uh, they attacked um, a family not uh, not far from here. She nods, I see. Was there any anything odd with those goblins? Uh, one seemed to be very insane, although I don't know how odd that is for goblins. Well-made uh, armor as well as weaponry, and significantly tougher than any other goblin I we fought here attacking Sandpoint a few days prior. He seems to think significantly tougher, you say, insane. Uh, did he have any markings or any yes. special armaments? Uh, yes, he had uh, some markings on his body. See, in addition to that, it only seemed that upon sustaining further injury, the creature whipped itself into a greater and greater frenzy. She seems to consider this again. I see. I, uh, I, and the creature's dead, I assume? Yes. She, she lets out a sigh. Well, that is good to hear. I think you, <laughs> my friends, have fought one of the goblin heroes of the region. Oh. She, and she smiles. <laughs> I know. I, I know. It's an odd concept. But certain goblins, well, they, uh, they rise to a status of almost worship in certain tribes. Uh, from your description, I would, I would imagine that you fought Greskert the Butcher. He, um, he is a, um, he, or was, I should say, a hero for the Bird Cruncher tribe. Uh, one of their great, um, great warriors they usually sent out to lead in their attacks and raids on the surrounding countryside. Interesting I... that we found this Grisgert the Butcher hiding in an armoire, along with three others in a family house. That is strange. Usually he would just go on a rampage and kill everything he sees. Something must have motivated him to try to remain hidden, I suppose. I had thought at the time that the goblins had merely uh, attacked with the others uh, during the Swallowtail Festival and then hid themselves away when they thought the battle had turned against them. But if this were a goblin hero, then that thought is sort of diminished. She seems to think, that is odd. Some, hmm. This is highly disturbing. And those boat tracks you spoke to me about in the camp, she seems to think, I am, um, yes. I think I need to go out there and have a look, actually. Um, the sheriff looks concerned as well. And uh, if it is true that the goblins are amassing and working together on such a large scale, I think... I think we need to ask for reinforcements from Magnamar. Um, so Laura speaks up. Where would they be gathering if, say, they were going to mount some sort of naval assault or passage of ships? Are there any sort of goblin encampments or large warrens located along the coastline, heading up towards the abbey? Um... Shalelo seems to consider, y yes, yes, there might be indeed. Uh, we have the uh, Thistlewood goblins. Um, they, they, a um, short, uh, a couple of months ago, they moved camp into an old, apparently an old ruin called Thistletop. It is along the northern coast, towards uh, 
towards the Abbey. And that could be a possible staging point for them. It's, uh, it's a ruin of an old fort built upon a peculiar rock uh, a bit out in the, in the water. Uh, it is quite difficult to get there though. Uh, lots of um, difficult terrain and uh, the nettle woods are, or at least can be, quite difficult to navigate. With such great difficulty, then naval travel would make sense as well as if any force were gathering against Sandpoint. It might choose there or any other form of difficult to reach locale, something so far out of the way that no one would even accidentally wander there until it was too late. She nods, yes. Uh, that might indeed be the case. She considers, um, yes, I, um, I do think I should check this out. Thank you for alerting me. She looks at the sheriff. Sheriff, with your permission, I will go out into the wild and see if I can scout out this goblin headquarters, as it were. Sheriff nods, yes, uh, of course, we will be grateful as always, Shalilu. And he turns to you guys. I, um, as I said, I think... I think we need to request reinforcements for Magnamar. Uh, he looks at the mayor, who nods. I, um... He seems to consider... I will take some, uh, some of my men and uh, travel to Magnamar as soon as I can today and request more reinforcements. Um, that means I will be out of the town for a couple of, a couple of days at least. He turns to you. Can I, uh, with your permission, mayor, I would like these people to be appointed uh, deputies of the town while I'm gone. They have helped us immensely and I trust um, that they can keep the peace while I am out of town. And it turns to you, if you are willing, of course. Certainly. Elvin seems amused by this turn of events. Saloro <laughs> <laughs> is just, you know, the, the, both the brows are lifted uh, out of the hood, just rotates his head to look at Roldar like, the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Roldar! Roldar! Talk to me, Roldar! <laughs> Griff? Sorry. It's fine. Sorry. Give me something! <laughs> Send help! Plot! <laughs> <laughs> help! Yes, Solaro. So, uh, so Laura just, you know, looks like looks bewildered. Uh, just, well, behind the veil and everything, just sort of just looks at Roldar, you know, just shrugs, like, we're going to be deputies? <laughs> well, Roldar honestly shrugs <laughs> and furrows his eyebrow. The uh, the mayor nods and says, "Well, well if you agree, then I will uh, I will, uh, with the sheriff's help, appoint you deputies of Sandpoint. You have the the right and the duty to uphold the law of the town and uh, basically <laughs> keep the peace while the good sheriff is in Magnamar requesting reinforcements." And the sheriff nods, "Yes, I uh, I uh, I would require I would request of you." that you try to make yourself as visible as possible during the days I'm gone. Um, you know, patrol the streets, uh, try to, to, keep the, to keep the peace and keep the good people of Sandpoint at ease. Uh, you are quite popular around town, and uh, I think the popular seeing you would help a lot. Of course, Sheriff. Saloro slowly nods. The sheriff nods and uh, digs around a bit in one of his drawers on the desk and hands each of you a, uh, a small badge um, that has the official sort of crest of the town. All right. I might as well pocket it. He nods very well. I, uh, I best make preparations for my leave then. Good luck on your journey, oh. sheriff. Thank you. And you too. As the sheriff uh, raises from his desk and stalks out of the room, disappearing down the corridor. Right. 
Shall I alone look at the party? Again, thanks for alerting me to this presence. I um, I will try to scout the wilderness and see if your suspicions that Thistletop is, is the headquarters hold any water, so to speak. I um, I will return a report to you as soon as I can. Very good. Saloro nods more quickly this time. Very well then. She nods at the mayor. Mayor. She nods back. Always a pleasure, Shalilu. Take care. As she moves out of the room as well. And vanishes. <laughs> yep. Roldar examines the badge. Yep. A small, uh, small metal badge of the seems to be made in silver uh, of the of the town's crest, uh, which is a swallow uh, flying over a stylized uh, shield. So is a swallow a bird or a butterfly? Uh, it is a swallow is a bird, but a swallow tail is a butterfly. Okay. All of your questions have been answered. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor looks at, at you and says, Very well, I will <coughs> entrust the, uh, the, the security and the peace of the city to you while the sheriff is out of town. If there is anything I can do to help, uh, please let me know. Saloro nods again. <laughs> A little confused. 18 intelligence isn't helping him this time. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, we will be sure to inform you if we uh, find anything. She nods very well. I, um, I wish you good luck then, and hopefully we will have no more incidents. Yes, hopefully. Uh, the mayor leads you out of the sheriff's office. Uh, I guess we should uh, divide uh, divide up the town uh, so that we could uh, cover all of it at once. You certainly could. So Laura uh, says, I... Chopper's Isle Low Tide seems like it would be in another, perhaps day or two. However, perhaps we should refrain from investigating it in this situation. Hmm. Alright. As we now must... Soloro lifts the, the, the little badge up to eye level. Be babysitters of an entire town. Uh, yes. Hmm. There are some guards in the town, though, right? Also? Yes, but considering how none of them were guarding the northeastern gate during the Swallowtail Festival, I, they might be misallocated. Perhaps we can do something about that, being deputies and all. Yes, perhaps. Elvin, after studying his badge for a little while, will just turn to the party and just ask, why did we agree to do this again? Saloro, so peering around Roldar and Erevin, says, I didn't hear you refuse. I think you were too busy laughing. Elvin will just say nothing. As well, exactly. we are, uh, we are uh, sort of trying to defend this town. See, and uh, this might be uh, the best way to do it. Alvin, people who need help accept silence as a form of consent. Remember that. Alvin will just go back to studying the batch and thinking about what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Saloro finds a way to lacerate the badge onto his uh, still a bit roughed up uh, robe and cloak and leaves. Hmm. And the rest of the party? Uh, what, what time is it? Uh, it is early morning. Uh, well, Arnos will suggest that we divide up the town in sections and uh, patrol it. <clears throat> uh, so. While while Saloro uh, 
when Salor leaves the garrison, he notices that Sheriff Hemlock and a couple of guards are riding out of town. Okay. Heading for the southern gate, I assume? Yes. Alright. Good. It's not some sort of ploy for him to spend more time with his lover. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm glad we've had that clarification. <laughs> no, it does not seem so. He seems to actually to be doing his job. Yes, yeah, spending he's hiding doing... in the brothel. He's doing his job. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, you, you take care of it. I'm going to be at the brothel. <laughs> Hello, kitty. <laughs> Good work, everyone. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Here's on the go piece. <laughs> Great work. <laughs> right, uh, the rest of the party. Is. I'm going to follow along with uh, Ervin, Arnos, and Alvin, Roldar. Okay. He knows Soloro does his own thing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Wizard massive, things. Massive quantities <laughs> of alone time are required. <laughs> <laughs> some things I need to take care of, you know. I'll show you what prestigitation can really do. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Look, no oh, hands. Oh. Mage uh, hand. Uh, <laughs> opening and banging that. Door actually, no, it can't, can't be done. It weighs more than twenty pounds. Sorry, <laughs> Mage hand can't oh. lift. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, you you went there. <laughs> <laughs> you really went there. I did. I did. What right, do do you start patrolling the town? What do you do? Salora is going to fetch Hen Heinrich, I guess. Uh, is he coming back or is he just? Nope, he's not around? coming back. <laughs> he's never You're coming right back. He's leaving. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go. Yes. Gotta go take the sheriff's badge. <laughs> <laughs> deputy Myers. <laughs> hmm. Show him deputy. No. Uh, what Solora will be doing instead of standing around at the city garrison is uh, he will locate himself in the uh, the northeastern section going down from the gate to the House of Blue Stones. And perhaps, uh, oh, you know, I can actually use the drawing tool. I'm going to use the drawing tool here. My god. Let's, uh, <laughs> so I go ahead and get a rectangle here. Uh, yep, that's the one I want. Let's go ahead and uh, draw out from the Tanner's Bridge to there. There, that'll be fine. All right. Obviously, Solora is not going to go swimming in the mill pond, but uh, that gives a, a rough idea of where Solora will be. Indeed. So, are we splitting up then? Uh, yes, I would think so. But Saloro won't tell you he's agreeing to your idea. <laughs> he's just going <laughs> to do it on his own and see if anyone else <laughs> figures. <laughs> it's a great passive-aggressive right. tactic. <laughs> you were watching the Arm War Man, and then a butcher came out and took a swing at him, so you know... <laughs> I guess Elvin will just watch over the northwestern part of the city near the old light. That's right, he can stick close to that city garrison. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Arnos will watch the southeastern part of the okay. town. Okay. <laughs> Alright, you start patrolling. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of people uh, is out and about as usual in Sandpoint, um, <clears throat> and you are still, you know, hailed as, uh, as people they trust. Everyone seems to be quite happy to see you walking around, and you know, you shake a few hands and get a, a bit of a bread. Uh, everyone seems to, you know, quite fond of you still, and the patrol uh, during the day seems to go quite smoothly, actually. Heinrich, uh, 
Yeah. Solora does nothing of the sort. On the horse, veil, gloves. Badge lacerated to be in front of the left breast. You know, just riding along. Frequent stops into the cathedral. And the House of Blue Star. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not a reason why he chose this section or anything, no. <laughs> exactly. Uh, patrol for five minutes. Yep. Time to read some book for a few hours. <laughs> All right. Uh, how you doing, Sage? <laughs> Tell me about the Sandpoint District. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you everything. All over Stay again. Stay a while and listen. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Stay a while and listen. <laughs> hmm. And there is no particular reason why Aeros shows uh, this part of the town either. I am not. sure not. You know, he wanted to... <laughs> you know, the, the fat man's feedback is there. It is a seedy den of ill repute. <laughs> yes, of course. No, no. That is the reason. Roldar tuck and hang out at the boisterous Hagfish Tavern. Alvin's best at the city garrison. <laughs> An old light, right? And, uh, Aravin can, you know, cover bits and pieces of everything in the center. You know, just find him sitting down by the theater, writing. Staring at the mill pond from the fishing dock. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Alright, a, a few hours into the patrol, um, Arnos hears a shout behind him in the street. And this is uh, Bethana Corwin, the uh, the uh, cook and maid of the Rusty Dragon, uh, rushing oh, no. toward him. Ma Master Aronos! Uh, yes? Uh, she, uh, she is clutching a piece of paper in her hand. I, something, something has happened to Ameko. Uh, 